welcome to the pre-release event for Pyro. If you have, we're going to have a Q&A session later. So for you all who just joined, if you want to put any questions in the Zoom comment section, we will get to those later. So, all right. Um, it is 5.05 .05 right now. So that means we are going to get started. All right. So welcome to the pre-release event for Pyro, the first series in the elemental, the first book in the Elemental Underground series, I'm sorry, by Allison Campbell, also known as AGM Campbell. I have had the great honor to have known Allison for five years and have known her writing in many various stages for five years as well. And I also had the greater honor of uh, beta reading the first draft, or not the first draft. <laughs> A draft, a <laughs> mini draft. Uh, so I, it's really great, and I can't wait to get my copy. So, um, without further ado, here is the genius behind all of it. Allison, just going to tell you a little bit about herself. So. Hello, everyone. Thank you for coming. Uh, my name is Allison, as you know. I write under the pen name AGM Campbell. And today we are celebrating this little guy, Pyro, which will be coming out on Tuesday, March 1st, which is in three days. So <laughs> that's super exciting and terrifying. Um, and let me tell you a little, a little bit about myself. I'm 25 and I have been writing since, uh, since I could form sentences, since I knew the alphabet basically <laughs> and i've been reading just as long stories have always been a huge part of my life and i've always wanted to be a published author this has been my dream for my entire life so thank you for coming to support poor me because this is just one step closer to achieving my dream so like i couldn't have done this without all of you so i appreciate you so so much and so growing up, I was always attracted to fantasy stories um, like Harry Potter and the Lord of the Rings. And I, I fell in love with those stories at a very young age. And I read voraciously, like all genres, not just fantasy, but I always came back to fantasy because I, I was attracted to the magic of it and the, the magic of the, the worlds and also the creatures and just the escapism of being able to slip into a fantasy world and just disappear for a while. And I hope that my stories can, can you know, help other people escape in a similar way and give them an escape from this, this cruel world that seems to just keep being cruel. <laughs> um, so yeah, I want my, my books to be uh, a place of solace for readers and to provide them entertainment and just make them smile. <laughs> so once again, thank you all for coming. I appreciate it so much. And now Allie is going to show us all the book trailer that I made to promote Pyro. Yes, I am very excited to show you this trailer. Allison worked very hard on it. So I hope you all enjoy.
All right. So that was the pyro trailer. Um, so yeah, Allison, you want to tell us, um, well, first maybe show us the book cover. Woo, there it is. Wow, in person. Um, and where can we get said beautiful book? <laughs> you can currently pre-order it on Amazon, Kobo Books, and Barnes and Noble. Uh, the Barnes and Noble paperback pre-order has a little issue though, and then that won't be available until March 4th. But if you wanted to order the paperback on release day, it will be available on Amazon. And on release day, it will be available on some other platforms as well. So stay tuned for more info. Awesome. Like would uh, Barnes and Noble do the e-reader? Yes. Yay. Yes. I have another. Cool. So yes. So now um, the moment you have all been waiting for, we are going to have an exclusive reading from Allison of, drum roll please, chapter one of Pyro. So without further ado, I would like to switch it over to Allison. I'm going to mute all of you uh, and I'm going to unmute Allison. Okay, chapter one, Melissa. Modern day, Monday, August 23rd, Cleveland, Ohio. My senior year of high school started off with a boy, a girl, and fire. Amber, my mom, had told me to try and make friends, as she always did on the first day of school, but like always, I didn't have any intention of doing so. I waited impatiently in homeroom, the most pointless part of school, for the day to truly begin while I read a couple chapters of the latest pick from my to-be-read pile. I glanced up for half a second every time someone entered the room. As usual, no one sat by me, but I didn't give a crap. Most of the kids I recognized, Sally, Nick, Brian, Ethan, Abigail, hmm. The unfamiliar boy was nearly as pale as me and had warm brown eyes and soft features that made me do a double take. I fought the urge to turn around and stare when he sat behind me. The much safer option was to look back at my book and try to read the rest of the page I was on. The hair on the back of my neck stood up when a shadow loomed over me from behind. I gulped and then he spoke. McCarthy? I turned around and looked right into his eyes. To my surprise, the dark-haired boy had spoken with a weird European accent. What? Sorry, I just noticed you were reading The Road. I love that book. Oh, yeah, I like it so far. Sorry to interrupt. He scratched his head, sheepish. Carry on. I turned back around and attempted rereading the same sentence a few times without processing it. Was he still looking at me? I adjusted my long red hair, making sure my side bangs still swooped to the right, covering my brown eye. I never wanted anyone to see my heterochromia. Not many people knew someone with two different colored eyes. And it wasn't that my eyes were two different shades of hazel. No, I had one brown eye and one green eye. A few seconds later, another stranger entered the room, and I glanced back up. This time, it was a pale girl with silver dollar eyes, dark brown hair that fell past her hips, and a petite figure that made her look like a pixie. After an apprehensive look around the room, she settled down at the desk to my right. Two new students? Okay. Everyone's attention went to the front of the room as Mr. Ryan pushed his magazine aside and stood up. One more year, kids. You can do it. And in case you haven't noticed, we have two new students, Willow and Sierra. He gestured at the boy and girl respectively, and Sierra turned around to flash a smile at Willow. I blinked up at my teacher. Willow was the boy's name? I could hear the other kids whispering about this, and I rolled my eyes when their thoughts went through my mind. Isn't that a girl's name? Did Mr. Ryan mean to say William? Oh man, that poor guy. That girl is seriously cute, though. As if my weird eyes weren't enough, I also heard people's thoughts occasionally. I couldn't control it because it was almost like bumping the tuning dial in a car by accident and switching stations. By now, I was used to it and the slight mental itch that preceded it. 
Then the announcements came on the loudspeaker, forcing us to hear the lunch menu for the day, the times of sports games and practices, and various sign-up times for different organizations. I didn't hear any of this because the wheels in my brain were turning, trying to identify the origin of Willow's accent. I hadn't heard anything quite like it, almost Dutch, but maybe Swedish. The bell rang and I hurried to my next class, English. It surprised me when Sierra ended up sitting next to me again. She smiled over at me. Hi, I'm Sierra. Her accent confirmed she was from the same country as Willow. I heard, I'm Melissa. Good to meet you. I nodded and chewed on my pen. We didn't speak again until just before lunch when I was walking out of my government class and witnessed a burly rugby player named Robert stick his foot out in front of Sierra. Not having been paying attention, she tripped and fell, spilling the contents of her messenger bag. Robert cupped his hands around his mouth and bellowed, Freshman! I flipped him off and ran over to Sierra, who was sitting up with wide, incredulous eyes. The other kids in the hallway either looked at her sympathetically or smirked, but none of them moved to help her. What a jackass, I said, kneeling and collecting her things for her. I'm not a freshman. Is it because I'm so short? Ugh, just ignore him. She took the books I was holding out to her and smiled widely at me in surprise. Her smile was so large and beautiful that my lips automatically twitched to return the favor. Thanks, you didn't have to do that. No one else stopped to help you. Everyone around here sucks. All they care about is looking cool. You should stick with me, I heard myself saying. I didn't know why I was saying these things. Maybe there was a brain tumor or some form of insanity involved. I never tried to make friends with anyone at school. All right. She stood up and looped her arm through mine as we walked down the hall. After asking me a couple times to stand in the queue with her, I realized she meant the lunch line and I obliged. She immediately launched into a one-sided discussion of her favorite book, The Fellowship of the Ring by J.R.R. Tolkien, while I examined my fingernails and occasionally made noises of acknowledgement. By the time she had collected and paid for her lunch and we were walking toward my usual table in the back corner, she had transitioned to bookstores and was telling me about her favorite one, Back Home, wherever that was. I love bookstores too, I said, finally contributing. I pulled a smashed PB&J from my lunch bag and grimaced at it before taking a bite. It was ironic because Amber was an excellent cook, but I insisted on making my own lunch every day. She did too much already. I've always wanted to write a book, so. Really? That's cool. I've always thought it would be cool to own a bookstore. She shrugged. Gare's books is fantastic. I wish you could see it. Where did you say you were from? I asked, knowing she hadn't. Uh, Europe, Iceland, that area. That's cool. She pushed her tray toward me and said, want some of these? I grabbed a handful of fries with a smile. The last thing I had expected from today was a new friend. Sierra smiled at something over my shoulder and I turned around to see Willow walking over with a tray of food. Hey guys, he said when he'd reached us. You don't mind if Willow joins us, do you, Melissa? Said Sierra. Not at all. Willow took a seat next to me and I was immediately aware that our arms were almost touching. I've never shared this table with anyone before. Why not, Willow said. My cheeks warmed. I don't exactly, well, have friends. Seriously, Sierra said. Seriously, it's always been that way. That's crazy, said Willow. Why not? I shrugged. I just focus on school. I had stopped caring about kids at school a long time ago, but the way Willow kept looking at me, as if he were truly invested in what I had to say, made me care quite a bit. Everyone needs friends, Sierra said. You can't survive for long without them. Well, I'm almost 18 and I'm just fine. We should hang out, Willow said, to my horror and delight. For a few seconds, I found it hard to breathe. I cleared my throat and unclogged it of peanut butter. They waited for my reply. Well, my mom owns a diner just down the street, Amber's place. We both walk, work there. If you come visit me, I could probably get you some free fries or something. Sierra smiled. Her happiness was almost tangible. That sounds wonderful, doesn't it, Willow? Yeah, yeah, it does. She nodded and said, we can come after school today. Willow made a sideways smile at her and she laughed a little. Um, how do you guys know each other? Are you both from Iceland? She's my sister, Willow said, looking amused. 
twin to be specific. Both had pale skin and dark hair and their faces were a similar shape. They had the same ears and almost the same mouth, although Willow's was smaller. When they noticed I was comparing them, they burst out laughing. Willow's laugh was big and full of gusto, which didn't seem to fit his appearance. Do we meet all the requirements? He joked. You do look similar. I wouldn't have guessed before, though. I always thought it would be cool to have a twin. You'd think so, wouldn't you? Hey, said Sierra. I love her, but I don't always like her. I had to join in their laughter because it was contagious. This was turning out to be the most interesting first day of school ever. The bell rang. AP Calculus was my next class. After Willow and I turned down the same hallway twice, I said, where are you headed? Krieger, me too. It surprised me how excited I sounded. I was making friends and I didn't know what to do with that information. He smiled at me and we continued the rest of the way in silence. I could only hope I wouldn't make a fool of myself. And miraculous, miraculously, I didn't. At the end of the day, I stowed my books in my locker and waved goodbye to Sierra and Willow after they promised once again to come visit me at work. The sound of tennis shoes against pavement made me turn in time to see a flying blonde ponytail and a cheerful smile. My next door neighbor, Bethany Winfried, slowed to a stop beside me. We'd occasionally walk to or from school together, and she also worked at the diner, but besides that, we had little in common. On the way home, we talked about things that didn't matter, like how our summers were and how nice the weather had been. I kicked a stone in my path with one of my yellow Converse shoes and watched it go sailing over four squares of sidewalk. After a prickling sensation on my scalp, Beth's thoughts came through. I wish I were smart like her. I smiled. By then, we had come to the edge of our street and crossed to the other side. James Garfield High School was only a block away from our houses, which was nice and convenient. I waved to Beth before walking in the front door of my house and catching a whiff of something sweet. Amber was baking, and that didn't surprise me one bit. What are you making, I asked her, dropping my bag on the kitchen floor with a, a loud thunk. She turned around and smiled excitedly. Amber was just slightly taller than I was, and she had shoulder-length brown hair that was sometimes curly, sometimes not. Her eyes were large, her skin slightly tan, and she was often smiling. She looked nothing like me, except I might have inherited her nose. I had never seen a picture of my father, but I imagined I would recognize him if I ran into him on the street, because he would look exactly like me. I didn't really care about meeting him. He was out of the picture, so what was the point? Amber was all I needed. Right now, she was wearing a polka-dotted apron over her blue sundress. With a little laugh, she spun over to me on her toes, the nails of which were painted bright red. Oh, just a little something. Taste it. She held the spoon to my lips, and I sucked the substance into my mouth. Yum! Is that homemade pudding? White chocolate flavored. She winked and moved to open the oven door. That's not all I made today. I bent down to peer inside and saw a pan of brownies baking. That was what I had smelled. I knew without asking that she had made them from scratch and they would taste better than any brownies in the world. After sighing happily, I let her pull me into a tight hug. Amber loved hugs almost as much as she loved cooking, baking, and people. How was your day, sweetie? She said, releasing me. It was good. I got myself a glass of water and sat down at the table. I think it's going to be a good year. Oh, she raised her index finger in the air. I have something for you to drink too. I waited patiently and a minute later, she placed a glass of lemonade on the table in front of me, freshly squeezed. I took a sip. It was so refreshing that I sighed again. Thanks mom. Sure thing, babe. So tell me more about your day. Did you meet anyone new? Yeah, actually, I felt reluctant to tell her about my new friends as if it were too personal a topic. Really? Who? Sierra and Willow, they're twins. Oh, lovely. Are they nice girls? I choked on my lemonade. Willow is a guy. She raised her eyebrows and leaned against the edge of the counter. I like them and they seem to like me. They said they would stop by the diner tonight to see me. That's wonderful, Melissa. You made friends on the first day of school. On the last first day of school, I said, but that didn't stop her from beaming. 
She asked me to put some music on while the brownies finished baking, so I went to the other room and popped a record by the Beatles onto our vintage record player. First there was crackling, then the music started. Amber immediately started dancing around the kitchen, holding her pudding spoon like a baton. The timer dinged, briefly interrupting our dancing session. I helped Amber with the dishes while the brownies cooled, then we frosted the brownies. We were sampling the finished product when it came time to leave for work. I told her more about Willow and Sierra as we walked down the street to the diner. So they're from somewhere in Europe, Iceland, I think. Are they really? Amber looked interested. That's very cool. They're exchange students? I don't know. We haven't talked much yet since I only just met them a few hours ago. But haven't you, you know, read their minds at all? You know I can't control it, I said, rolling my eyes. Sometimes I wondered if my father could also read minds, especially since Amber had no abnormal abilities to speak of. I wished I knew more about him, even just his name, but Amber didn't like to talk about him very much. Sometimes I would find her poring over old photographs and crying silently. Whenever I walked into the room where she was, she would always put the pictures away before I could see, and she kept them in a secret place so I could never find them when I was home alone. I had gotten over this a long time ago and chalked it up to one simple reason. She was still in love with him. We walked into Amber's place, the diner Amber had opened right after college, and moved habitually to our stations. I began washing the dishes that had piled up while Amber checked to make sure things were going smoothly. Hey, Randy, she said, how are things this morning? Just another day at the pound, Randy mumbled as he sliced tomatoes. Everything all right, Chris? Amber asked behind me as I held my hands under the faucet and waited for the water to get hot. Oh yeah, fine and dandy. Melissa, have a good first day? I turned just in time to see Chris, master of the spatulas and pans, flip a pancake in the air and Amber casually catch it on a plate that held three others alongside sausage links and a bed of hash browns. Amber believed the best diners had breakfast all day. Ask her yourself. She took the plate along with a plate of fish and chips that had been sitting under a warming lamp and headed out into the dining area. It was good, I said, without making Chris repeat himself. I made friends. No, you, Chris said. I bowed my head over the sink, letting my red hair hide my blush. I'm just pulling your chain. That's great, that's really great. I enjoyed washing dishes because it was a mindless task. It was something I could do with my hands to keep me busy while still allowing my mind to wander. Sometimes I just needed to have a break from my rigidly scheduled life to gather my thoughts. The hours went by a lot faster when I was washing and drying, so it didn't surprise me when it was suddenly dinner time and Amber was hollering for me to come help her wait tables. The dinner crowd was high pressure, but I could take it. I'd had a lot of practice. I seated a family of four that had just come in and was leaving the drink station with their glasses in hand when I almost collided with a petite long-haired girl. Oh, I'm sorry, I said with a gasp. That's all right, she said. Her friendly, accented voice was immediately familiar to me. Hey, Sierra. Melissa, there you are. When I just got here a few minutes ago. She looked over her shoulder, and I saw him sitting by himself, stirring his Pepsi with a straw. Somehow, he looked even more attractive than he had at school. Can you come sit with us? I told her I would in a little while, which made her smile. She went back to her table and said something to Willow that I couldn't hear, and he sent a smile my way. I felt a fluttering in my stomach and put my hand on the wall to steady myself as I walked into the kitchen. The next half hour went by extremely slowly. It was like the universe was teasing me. After taking about 15 more orders and carrying at least 20 plates and somewhere around 30 glasses to various customers, Amber finally agreed I could go on break. I filled the empty chair at Willow and Sierra's table with a sigh of exhaustion. Hey, Willow said. He smiled directly at me, and I was forced to look at him, which made my heart race. Hey, I said back. This is a cute place, Melissa, said Sierra, breaking the awkward moment. Thanks. Amber found it after she graduated from college, and she snatched it up before anyone else could. She always wanted to open her own diner. Willow took a sip of his drink and then said, who's Amber? My mom. I pointed at her. That was weird. Sorry. <laughs> My computer just did a weird thing. Okay. 
Uh, Willow took a sip of his drink and then said, who's Amber? My mom. I pointed at her as she walked past with a tray, her cheeks flushed. Over there. You call her your mom by her first name? Sierra blinked at me. Is she okay with that? I don't call her Amber to her face. I just think it suits her better than mom. Amber had such a youthful way about her and mom sounded old to me. What about your dad? Willow asked. It's just been the two of us all along. My father isn't in the picture. Neither of our parents are in the picture either. I blinked awkwardly, not knowing how to respond. I really didn't know how to talk to people my own age because I mostly just talked to Amber and our coworkers. I'm so sorry. So you're orphans? No, Willow said with a hint of a smile, but our parents don't care for us. When we're in a room together, you can't even tell we're related. Another woman raised us, Sierra added, a friend of the family. Wow, I didn't know what else to say. It sounded so strange to me. Willow's eyes sparkled at me as he said, so it's cool to us how close you and Amber are. They exchanged wide grins and their close bond made me wish I weren't an only child. So I said, desperate to change the subject, why did you guys move to Cleveland? Heck, why did you move to the United States? They both avoided meeting my eyes and Willow busied himself with drinking his Pepsi until he finally answered me. It's a long story. We've been homeschooled all, all our lives, but we decided we wanted to try being normal for our last year. Logically, if someone wanted to go to secondary school, they would go somewhere nearby, but we wanted a complete change of scenery. We've always wanted to travel more. It was difficult trying to pick a place to go, Sierra added, but Adam, a friend of ours, suggested Cleveland. He lived here for a while, and he said it was an interesting city. That intrigued us. We found a cheap apartment here in town and our parents aren't giving us money for it. It's no problem since we turned 18 this past June. That's cool. Has the city lived up to your expectations? My heart was hammering inside my chest when Willow gazed into my eyes and he was gazing, not just looking. Actually, it succeeded them, he said. The closest thing to a smile I could manage was a twitch of my lips and then I jumped to my feet. I really should get back to work. But thanks for stopping by, both of you. I looked over at Sierra, who I had forgotten was sitting there for a moment. I'll see if I can get you some fries from the kitchen. As my two new friends waved, I turned on my heel and left them, feeling extremely overwhelmed by the day. And that's all you're getting until Tuesday. <laughs> I want all more. Right. <laughs> I want more. <laughs> all right. Let's see. Well, I'm going to. Um, okay, I think. Can we all see each other? Uh, it's okay if we can't. Um, oh, well, I'll just put Allison back up here because she has a beautiful face. So, um, <laughs> well, wow. Let's have a round of applause, awesome. virtual applause Yay. for Allison. Yes, yeah. guys. Take a few moments. Congratulations. Any quick reactions? um cheers Allison <laughs> cheers <laughs> cheers so yes yeah, so yep you'll have to buy pyro to find out more uh <laughs> so um now we are going to move on to the Q&A portion of the event so uh, we have some great comments of so congratulations in the comment section. Allison, you should check them out. Um, Thanks, guys. <laughs> so, um, yeah, Q&A. So let's start with, we have a question from Avery here. It says, when, where, where did it go? <laughs> oh, how can we make sure we know when the second book comes out? Um, so I'm going to be very vocal on social media, so you'll, you'll probably hear it from me on there since we're all friends, because um, I will be shouting it from the rooftops, but you can also go to my website, agmcampbell.com uh, for more news and sign up for my <laughs> newsletter there, and I will try and keep everything up to date and let everyone know things as soon as possible. Awesome. Yes. It's very cool to have your own website. And I'm just, yeah, that's really cool. Um, well, that leads 
me into a question that I have, which is like, you're only 25. I just, can we take a moment <laughs> to think about that? Um, you have written at an entire book, not to mention many, like you have many other books planned, drafts of them. You've been doing this for 10, 10 years. Uh, how have you managed this? I just want to know, like, tell me your secrets. <laughs> um, so the secret, I have two, I have two big secrets. Number one, um, don't have a social life. <laughs> I, um, for middle school and high school, I, I did not really have much of a social life. Like we're talking, I spent the whole summer just inside writing. So, you know, that's a big part of it. <laughs> You've got plenty of time to just write when you aren't hanging out with people or going places. Um, my number two thing is this little event online called NaNoWriMo, which if you haven't heard of NaNoWriMo, it stands for National Novel Writing Month. And it is, there's a website, it's like a nonprofit, um, just a challenge to try and write a 50,000 word novel in one month. It takes place every November. And they actually have uh, Camp NaNoWriMo in April and July now too. So there's three months out of the year that this is going on. And I try and participate in as many of these as possible. Um, so, you know, 50,000 words isn't usually a whole novel, but it's, it certainly gets you started. And even if you don't reach the goal, like just trying to get in the habit of writing like regularly and like getting words on the page, like helps so much. So basically just like making a habit for yourself um, is, a, is a big part of it and <laughs> just sticking to it. Yeah, that's awesome. Yeah, it seems like we have people, a lot of people in the audience agree um, that, well, I would like to say that, um, well, I just, it, that, you know, my image of an artist is very, <laughs> not like this driven like standard goal oriented person so it's really like great that you have that uh it, and your youtube channel is uh full of like writing process stuff too um so do you have any like i don't know what do you have a favorite writing like activity to keep yourself yes motivated? actually um <laughs> One of my favorite things to do is uh, do writing sprints or word sprints. Um, it's, it's a thing that I picked up on the internet from other writers. A lot of writers will hold like live streams where they hold, where they host um, writing sprints and they'll just do like, they'll set a timer for 20 minutes and you try and write as much as you can in 20 minutes. And then you come back and report how many words you wrote or like if you finished a chapter or it's basically just a way to um, make a community out of it like we're all in this together like just motivating each other and I find that writing word sprints I get like way more words down on the page than I would just sitting by myself like full of self-doubt and like well I think this sentence I'm gonna spend like a half hour reworking this one sentence just cuz <laughs> but like when you're doing word sprints you're like oh it's like a race to the finish kind of even though it's not a contest or anything you're just it's just like it's like a contest with yourself basically but and I find it really fun it's like a game almost <laughs> works for me that sounds I should try that that sounds yeah. great you're just blow me away so many ways um <laughs> so uh well we have a question from mary beth which is also i ha had a similar question you have you have in the trailer we saw like this uh city scene in the opening um so it I, well first i'm wondering like what city is that and also like what other you know possible inspirations have you had in your own life that have right happened emerged um, in the as you may, yeah as you may have picked up from the little expert excerpt i read um a lot of the story takes place in cleveland ohio um that's like the the non-magical setting um and that's where i grew up i lived there until i was nine years old 
And that's actually where I was when I first got the first few ideas for this, this series, uh, this story. I was, I was in Cleveland visiting some family and the story came to me, started to come to me there. And it just felt natural for it to be set there because it's it's so close to my heart, that place. Um, and it just it just like it just fit. I don't know. <laughs> and um, you'll have to read Pyro to find out more about the setting, the, the, the magical setting. <laughs> awesome. Um, and also in the way of inspirations, you talked about your um, love for fantasy early on in this event. Um, do you have like uh, any like main authors or like main books that have just really guided your writing process or experience? Absolutely. Um, I would say two of my most favorite authors would be Neil Gaiman and Stephen King. Um, and although Stephen King writes primarily horror, he also dabbles in fantasy. And I would argue that that fantasy and horror go hand in hand because I mean a lot of a lot of fantasy can be pretty pretty horrifying, like some of the creatures and things. I mean, the Lord of the Rings can be scary, <laughs> you know, like things like that. Like it gets pretty dark. Um, so, and I like I really like the dark side of things. Uh, Neil Gaiman also you know his, his books are pretty like dark but beautifully dark um so i admire both of them um for that and i i try to to capture the darkness um in my books but i also try to balance it with some of the more beautiful things in the world um so yeah i recommend if you haven't read either of those authors i recommend checking them out because they're both extremely talented Yes, I will definitely add it to my very tall stack of books to read. And <laughs> um, so, well, you talked about the scariness of uh, fantasy uh, at times. Um, and Avery was wondering uh, earlier, like, why did you choose elves versus other magical creatures? And and I'm also wondering, like, I don't know a lot about elves other than my um, sad understanding of the North Pole and that's <laughs> about the, the extent which I know. So please enlighten us. <laughs> this is where it gets a little bit embarrassing because um, I will reiterate, I was 12 when I started writing this series. I was in sixth grade and that was when the big twilight craze was happening. So in my the very early, not well-written uh, scenes that I wrote, they were actually vampires, but uh, I uh, came to my senses. <laughs> um, nothing against vampires, like they can be fun, but um, I like wasn't as deeply into them like it was a phase for me pretty much um and but i i've always been really drawn to the elves and the lord of the rings um and just how beautiful and powerful they are um and like how how close to the earth they are and i wanted to to do something different and i was like you know you don't get a lot of modern fantasy with with elves you get lots of high fantasy things like game of thrones lord of the rings like where it's in a more medieval setting but you don't get a lot of like modern urban fantasy that with elves so i wanted to do something different and i i've always loved elves so i thought why not no i love it i feel like we've been drowning in vampires for a while <laughs> um yeah, well, um, so I want to know, well, so does Mary Beth, <laughs> um, how many books are you planning or have you written or like a draft of? I just want to know. I have drafted the entire series, um, but the other books are all first draft only very rough, but um, there, I'm planning on there being five books total. So this is the first and there's going to be four more um but we'll see what happens in the editing stages you know that could train change drastically but five books is is the plan right now wow still working on my one book <laughs> 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 uh, 
<laughs> oh, first draft. Um, wow. So that is really exciting. Um, that means probably a lot of world building, right? Like a lot yeah. more. Are you going to like expand beyond Parsia or like, do you have any, can you give us any kind of, um, I don't know, clues into that? <laughs> like, like in this series, expand beyond Parsia? I, I, yeah, just any world build. I don't know. Um, I don't know a ton about Parsia. So it is Parsia. I, there's a map in your book. Maybe you'd like to show us the map uh of parts yeah. the underground the underground yeah. yeah yeah there is a map um it's cut off a little bit because this is my proof copy it's it's, it's uh, uh <laughs> it's not showing up super well but basically this is just um one location in parsia that's focused on in this book um but maybe there will be more locations that are explored gotcha. who knows <laughs> cool um yeah will not divulge because you know spoilers and also <laughs> you know it could it could really change a lot in edits <laughs> that's true no i appreciate your honesty about the writing <laughs> process um i just if anyone has any more questions feel free to drop them in the comments we are running early on time so I still have some questions but um yeah we feel free to drop them in there um so for the next question uh do you have do you see like yourself in any of your characters like because character building and world building is all there, there's a lot a lot of you gotta get that stuff from somewhere so <laughs> yeah that's that's a really, really good question because I mean, I could argue that I'm in all of my characters at least a little bit since I mean, I burst them. <laughs> um, <laughs> but also, you know, a lot of them are inspired by people who I know um, or like, you know, it's like like seasoning them with a little bit of different people, um, just making this fun mixture. So yeah i'm like i'm in a lot of it and so are a lot of other people <laughs> you might be reading this book and say hey that sounds like so and so it probably is it probably is supposed to be a little bit of so and so <laughs> sprinkled in there um uh i don't necessarily see myself like as the protagonist because some authors just like blatantly write themselves in like it's just them you know mm. with a different hair color or something <laughs> um, <laughs> but um i mean i definitely see myself in melissa a lot um because she's she doesn't have that many friends like i do i, I it's not like i feel like i don't have friends but <laughs> i've been there like feeling alone and feeling mm. like you know in the zone with um schoolwork or in, in my case I guess writing like just feeling kind of closed off from the rest of the world and I know how it can how it feels in high school to not necessarily fit in into any one group um so I wanted to you know capture that um but yeah that's kind of hard to to, to say because I don't necessarily do it on purpose it just kind of happens as I write and I'm kind of in in all the characters at least a little bit <laughs> Okay. that's really cool um yeah i feel like a lot of people do write themselves but that's not necessarily a bad thing um but that's really awesome that you can uh spread out your personal experiences um so we have a question from merle bachman uh she says i'm curious how you are going to promote your book. Are you going to go to conferences where you could sell it, reach out to libraries, et cetera, et cetera? That is also a very good question that I'm still exploring. <laughs> <laughs> I appreciate any and all ideas. <laughs> um, I, uh, part of the, some of the um, platforms that I'm self-publishing my book on, they do have like an option to uh be open to like libraries purchasing your book um but in order for that to happen you know there would have to be some expressed interest like if like a reader reaching out to a library like hey can you like get this book so that i can borrow it um 
or I could reach out to them. Yeah, I'll, I'll have to look into that, but definitely the libraries are a possibility. Um, as for conferences, I I don't even know because uh, you know the state of the world right now. It's like I'm like all virtual in my head. I'm not even. I haven't even like left my apartment in my headspace. Right. Like, <laughs> um, there's a whole other world out there, and it's um, yeah. I haven't even looked into that yet. There's there's so much I could I could do. So who knows? <laughs> Can I? Can I say something on libraries? Yeah. Um, uh, sure. Okay. Uh, Larry and I knew this guy um, in our business dealings, and he wrote a book about coal mining. So not connected, but he got them published and, and in every school library in Kentucky. So maybe school libraries would be yeah. another avenue. Absolutely. I have thought of that, especially since my adult. audience is young adult. Yeah. So, yeah, absolutely. And if I could add something, <clears throat> is that okay? Sure. Um, another, and I'm no expert on this promotion is always very hard for me, but I do know that you need to get your book reviewed. So you need to get it to, you know, different journals. Um, they can, you know, online is great, but yeah, you probably need to sit down with an advisor of some sort and plot out a release, a marketing release strategy, because you need yeah. to get this book into the hands of your reading public. Absolutely. <laughs> All right, thank you. Yeah, thanks for your contributions, audience. Um, and Dr. Bachman, you are somewhat, you do have some expertise in this field, I would say. Yeah. Um, so uh, on the same topic, we have a question from Kim. Um, how long did the process of writing to publication take you? Could you talk about the publishing aspect? How did you do it? <laughs> <laughs> um, so it's interesting because the case with this book is, is uh, way different than it's going to be with other books because it was my first book. Um, so like... I wrote it and then I wrote like a bunch of other books and then now I'm, I went back to it and there's been a lot of flip-flopping over the years because um, I, I wrote the first draft um, in middle school and then I rewrote it completely freshman year of college and then extensive edits and stuff um, and so it's kind of hard to pinpoint with this book how long the process took um, but like, I would have to really look back like through my emails for like records of all these drafts and things. <laughs> but um, I guess, yeah, it's really hard to say. Um, I guess I got serious about like, I'm gonna publish this now, like 2020. So I guess you could say the publishing aspect, um, like preparing to publish took um, like a year approximately um yeah it was sometime during during um like after I went to work from home during the pandemic um and then I I, I made a decision and I you know I got it professionally edited and got my cover and um all of that um yeah, yeah so basically okay talk about the publishing aspect so um yeah, with the writing community, writing and publishing community, you just have to like reach out to as many people as possible and like make connections left and right. Um, and the way I found my editor, it was actually through YouTube, um, which sounds kind of shady maybe, but um, actually that's how a lot of this came to be. Like a lot of my self-publishing education came from YouTube and that's like, part of how I decided to do this rather than going the traditional publishing route um, was through watching um, author tubers. That's what they call it, the, the author community on YouTube, watching author tubers um, talk about their experiences and like share tutorials on how to publish on different platforms, things like that. Um, and one of the author tubers that I followed um, actually owns her own editing company. 
um, and she's extremely professional and amazing to work with, and I adore her. Um, and she was a blast to work with. Um, and then I, there's a website, I don't know how, how much detail you want, but um, there's, there's also this amazing um, resource out there, readsy.com, R-E-E-D-S-Y.com. Um, and it's a place where um, authors and editors and proofreaders um, can like find each other, basically. It's kind of like LinkedIn, uh, mm. where you like, share like these are the projects i've worked on this is what i charge these are the genres i prefer um this is my time frame or whatever so that's how i found my my proofreader and that's how a lot of people find their their editor their copy editor is on there um and it's yeah it's a great resource and like of course people leave reviews like this person you know was really great to work with or this person nah <laughs> um and you know reviews are really important for that so um i found someone really good on there as well for for editing so yeah lots and lots of research is how i did it um yes. research and lots of time um because yeah <laughs> just you just have to dedicate a lot of yourself to to finding out as much as you can find out and of course, it depends on your genre and how much how much time and effort and money, of course, you want to put into your project. Um, that will determine you know which path you take. But yeah, yeah, it's all wow. fun. <laughs> that you have clearly done a lot, as you said, of research, and you know you hear about the overnight success people. But that's kind of like misleading because of how much yeah. work is behind the scenes, you know. And uh, I, you know, the word author tuber is very. I'm really glad to know that now. Um, it's really awesome that you have all of this um, just understanding of like the online world. Like that's got to come in handy. Like that's what you got to do in this day and age. So, wow, that is very impressive. Well, uh, it. Kim is very grateful for that response. <laughs> I'm going to go back and like take notes when I rewatch this later. Yeah, uh, yeah ask me anything. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, we have another question from Paula, uh, who says, you mentioned that you write primarily for young adults. Are there any plans to expand that audience? And I'm guessing that means not for this series, but like in other works you might do. Yeah absolutely is my response um yeah i pretty much want to write for everyone <laughs> like i even want to write for children someday although i don't know when that'll be but um uh yes a lot i will have a lot for adults especially because i also like writing romance and you can only go so far <laughs> you know for young adults <laughs> if you know what i mean that's true <laughs> um <laughs> and also um, this series and also some series I may write in the future are, are kind of on the border between young adult and adult because they're like going into college. So they're, you know, they're kind of becoming adults. Um, and there was a, a sort of um, audience called new adult for a while. It didn't really take off, at least not with uh, traditionally published books. Um, but like, I would say I, I like new, I like to write new adult, but like a lot of people wouldn't know what I meant by that. But basically new adult is like anyone from like 19 to 30, like, oh. or like mid thirties, maybe like, yeah, it's like a little older than, than young adult, but that's not really, that's not like an accepted audience. So, but <laughs> But yeah, I'm going to be writing all over the place. So expect, expect a lot more. <laughs> well, new adult, that gives me some hope. I'm still considered new, you know, that's great. <laughs> um, <laughs> um, yeah, when you were talking about the uh, can't go too far in the young adult uh, with the romance, I was reminded of a fun fan, Harry Potter fan fiction you did, but you don't have to talk about oh. that. <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> So 
Um, I have a question um, just to continue talking about your uh, where, where you plan to go. You you studied alongside me uh, at Spalding University to get a Bachelor in Fine Arts degree uh, in Creative Writing, and I'm wondering if you plan to expand your education at all, like MFA or like self. You're you're doing a lot of self-taught stuff, which is totally valid too and cheaper. <laughs> so I don't know. Tell us about that. Um, basically, the jury is still out. I would love to to you know keep going back to school. Um, <laughs> I don't know. I guess it depends on what happens with the world and like what happens with my money situation because <laughs> you know you know how it is um, but I would love that. I would love nothing more than to go back to school. Um, yeah I'm like obsessed with college. <laughs> A lot of the stories I write take place in college and I'm like I'm 25 like get over it. Like. <laughs> <laughs> it may never happen i may never get over it it's fine <laughs> someone's got to write for them so <laughs> that's true well yeah college it was great do you have any like favorite i don't know like what we we had some great writing workshops in spalding and like uh but we didn't really have any young, you know young adult fantasy workshops we had a fiction workshop so how did you like incorporate your current your favorite genres into your study that is a good question um well it depends on the class there were um instances where i was able to write things that were magical um for instance uh we ha i actually had this class at the first college i went to for my first two years hanover college i had this class called women in fiction um it was such a good class. It was, uh, we were reading um, like books written by women and um, like not all female characters, but all female um, authors. Yeah. Anyways, um, and one section of our class, we were focusing on fairy tales uh, because we read um, the, the Bloody Chamber, which is a collection of short stories by Angela Carter, which I highly recommend if you're into fairy tales, even slightly, please check that out. It's amazing. Um, one of my favorite things on my bookshelf. And um, during that section, we had to pick a story, pick a, pick a, a fairy tale and like do a, a retelling of it. And that was one of my favorite um, writing projects I did. Certainly my favorite for that class. And I did um, a retelling of Bluebeard which is not like a super common, like hmm. a lot of people don't know that one, but it's basically, um, long story short, this, um, this girl marries a guy who she doesn't really know. He's just like a lord or like some fancy rich guy with a castle. And then after she marries him, um, he's like, I have to go on a business trip. Um, here's like a bunch of keys, but there's this one door you can't go in. <laughs> by and she's like uh i'm gonna go look in that in that room at some point because i need to like know all the secrets because we're married hello um but uh she finds out that uh there's a bunch of dead bodies and like then he has to kill her it's real fun um <laughs> but um yeah it's it was it was really fun doing a retelling of that because um I forgot where I was going. I got so excited. About <laughs> um, basically, I love retellings. That's another mm -hmm. thing that I'm that I'm um, passionate about, as uh, Dr. Bachman knows, because <laughs> that was my thesis <laughs> project. Um, was uh, doing a retell. I don't know why I didn't start with that. That's okay. <laughs> <laughs> but um, yeah, actually, my thesis project was a retelling of Rapunzel, which will be a novel at some point. Um, Nice. But, you know that's a secret um and yeah i just love fairy tales like fairy tales and the, the magic that comes with them and like literal fairies you know i, I love yes. actual fairies a lot <laughs> cool that's awesome um, 
Yeah, I forgot what the, where was I going? <laughs> uh, the original <laughs> question was how did you incorporate your own uh, right. writing yes. genres into yes. So feel free yes. to expand or whatever you feel like. Yeah. Um, or not. Yeah, I mean, a lot of our like creative writing prompts were pretty like open-ended. Um, I remember writing a story that <laughs> once again, it's kind of a retelling, but it was like uh, Cinderella inspired and it was about um, this. It's kind of ambiguous until the end, but it's about this lady who gets invited to a ball along with all the other ladies in the town. And that, yeah, you know what I'm talking about. <laughs> um, and uh, at the end, you know, she's like dancing with the prince. The night is perfect. And she's like, ha, I got him. And then she, uh, <laughs> she like eats him. She like transforms into a big scary and she's like gobble gobble. Uh, and it's like, what? <laughs> what happened with the story? But I really like twists like that. I like turning things on their head like that. Like you love plot yeah, twists. I do. I love them. So <laughs> yeah. And yeah, that was a terrifying, great story though. That was awesome. Thank you. <laughs> well, um, so that is all the questions I have. I, I'll just open it up to the group for a minute, just if anyone has any spontaneous questions and then we can uh, head toward the end. Anyone have any additional questions for Allison? Nope. Oh, hi. Hi. <laughs> We were wondering what's going to happen with the adventures of Alan Mousy. Oh yeah, yeah, that's an idea that that's a it's a children's book uh, series that that I had slash my parents had, <laughs> and that will definitely happen at some point because if I was going to write a children's book series, it would be that. Um, <laughs> for anyone who doesn't know, which not everyone here knows, but uh, my uh, childhood stuffed animal Mousy is um rather famous in our family and circle of friends <laughs> <laughs> and uh we thought it would be cute if i did something like sort of like calvin and Hobbes, where it was like mousy and al like me and him like just going on adventures and doing things together and i i think that would be fun <laughs> the important question is mousy still around oh yes oh we know he's alive and kicking <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that, this pleases me thank you oh my goodness <laughs> adventures where mousy meets other people's childhood friends oh my yes goodness. oh my god that would be so cute i am like sold on this idea nice <laughs> wow okay. yeah ideas for your children's epic. career <laughs> children's writing career also i just i have to shout out well while i have this opportunity but because i don't think you guys know this um but um, let me just, oh, I'm tearing up already. That's oh. great. Um, but let me just read you um, the dedication yes. um, in this book. <laughs> Woo! <laughs> For Heidi and Paula, who showed me how cool twins can be. <laughs> oh, wow. Love you guys. <laughs> oh. So I'm glad you made it to the stream <laughs> so you, so that I could cry. <laughs> what a beautiful. I'm like, oh you're my gosh. You're muted, but we're a mess. Thank you. This is beautiful. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. There's so much love in this virtual room tonight. Um, <laughs> that brings us to the end, the near end of uh, the pre-release event for Allison Campbell's book. So um, thank you all so much. Um, we, yes, Cairo, we'll look, look at that beautiful cover again. Um, another just round of applause for Allison. We you did a great job. Um, and thank you everybody for coming. Uh, don't forget to order your copy for Pyro and Allison, any other words. Um, thank you all so much for coming. I love you all so, so much. And thank you so much to Sally and to, to Merle Bachman for hosting this stream. I couldn't have done this without you guys. You guys are amazing. I love you so much. <laughs> we love you too, so, so much. So, all right. Thank you, everybody. Have a great rest of your evening.
Okay.